first up, it's the Ninja Foodie Smart XL Two Basket Air Fryer with 10 quarts of cooking space in a unique two basket design with technologies we've never even heard of before like dual zone technology and smart cook. Next up, it's the New Way Brio 15.5 quart air fryer oven. With its built-in rotisserie and exclusive searing plate, this unit's gonna stay real competitive. And finally, the Chefman Air Toast Air Fryer Oven. With its classic looks, stainless steel finish, and it's the only one with a heating element on the bottom. This is going to be good. We selected these based on features, price, counter space, and each one having at least one unique feature so you can decide which team is best for you. All right, let's talk about build quality. You work hard for your money. You want to make sure you get an appliance that's going to last in your kitchen for a long time. Let's start with Ninja. Now, you will never be disappointed in the build quality from a Ninja product. They look great. They feel great. You can tell they're using top quality materials, and they've given thought to everything, even the probe fitting nicely into the unit. The New Wave Brio 15.5 quart. It sits right in the middle as far as capacity between all the three units, and just like Ninja, it feels great. You can tell they put a lot of thought into the design. The door feels great. There's a nice weight to it. It's even removable to clean. Fantastic stuff. The digital brain and all the controls are bright and easy to get at. And last but not least, the Chefman Air Toast Air Fryer Oven. Now this is all stainless steel, so if you have a stainless steel kitchen, this is going to look great in it. But remember, that means that the material is a little bit thinner and it's going to get crazy hot. Now, I have never really been a huge fan of the stamped on stuff, just because over time it wears out, but that's one of those things we'll only know with some use. Now, this is 20 quarts. It's the largest capacity of all of our units. Now, let's talk about what you get. A lot of these units come with accessories that are either included or you can purchase. Let's start with the Ninja. The Ninja comes packaged with a small cookbook, quick start guide, and of course, the manual. The Chefman has a fry basket, an oven rack, and of course the typical manual, guide, and quick start. So this one's not even close. Chefman comes with a basket that barely fits on the rack that it's designed for. These guys didn't even give me something to steam with. But the New Wave Brio comes with virtually everything I could ever want for this. A sear plate, oversized trays to slide in with the curved back. Then there's the rotisserie basket and the rotisserie function for the chicken. You talk about covering the entire gamut of meals and snacks and breakfast, lunches, and dinners that I want to cook for my family and friends. These guys are going to give me the biggest options with all the included accessories. Now let's see how it fits on the counter. Here's a couple of standard items just for reference. Now you're going to notice that the width and height of the Chefman and the Ninja are about the same. But the New Wave Brio is a little bit narrower, freeing up a little bit more counter space. Now let's talk about ease of use, because there's a lot to be said for user-friendly units. And when it comes to user-friendly, you don't get much more user-friendly than dials. These are really, really simple. Everything's clearly printed. You can see each function, and you don't have to wonder about combinations of buttons you're pressing or anything like that. Just turn the dial, and you're off and running. And now, the New Wave Brio. This has a touchscreen front, and it's got all of its features in nice bright lettering. So it's really easy to see, it's really easy to read, and the only thing that may ever trip you up is that there's different functions for the sear and stage cooking that takes a little bit of a learning curve. But that really is it. Other than that, it's basic start, stop, time, temperature, things that we're used to seeing. And one of the coolest features is the 100 built-in foods programmed right into the unit. With your package comes a cheat sheet numbered 1 to 100 of all the different foods that you can simply put in the oven, select the number, and hit start, and this will take care of it for you. That's a very cool feature. I think you're going to like that. And finally, the Ninja Smart XL Dual Basket Air Fryer. Now, there's a lot of functions built into this. This also has some preset recipes. It's got easy to read function buttons from the air fry to the bake to roasting, dehydrating, all the way down the line. You are going to have to learn how to figure out which basket you're using at which time, when to coordinate the smart cook technology, when to uh, incorporate the dual finish. It's all quite simple to learn, but there is a learning curve that you're going to have with this unit. But boy, once you nail it, this is a pretty great unit to use. Really, really easy. So the Ninja and the New Wave are great machines with all of their built-in combinations of time and cooking, but they do have learning curves. When it comes to user-friendly, you got to say, 
big old dials is going to take it every time. One for Chefman. As a side note, the Chefman Air Toast Air Fryer is available with a touchpad display like its counterparts here today. All right, so we've looked at build quality, features, functions, what you get with it, how easy it is to use. You know what? It's time for the food. So we're going to start with chicken. Not the sexiest food in the world, but even though you say you're going to go ahead and make some sort of frou-frou French steak and frity fries and stuff, you're not. Chances are you're going to make chicken. So let's see how these machines handle what we eat every day. And we're going to start with a basic, come on in here and have a look, a basic five and a half to six pound chicken, salt, pepper, garlic, and because the New Wave Brio has a rotisserie function, we're going to use it. Now, I've already got my chicken trussed and ready and on the spit and season. So come on in here and I'll show you how it fits in the machine. Now the rotisserie is built in. There's nothing special you have to do. It hooks on one side and then clips on the other. See that? Now I'm just going to close the door and here's how simple this is to do. I'm going to set my temperature to 375 and I'm going to set it for one hour and then rotisserie. The only drawback with using the rotisserie function is that I can't use the probe, obviously, because it's going to get all twisted up. So that's the trade-off when you go with the rotisserie. And let me turn that light on. Have a look. Just like at the store when you line up for that rotisserie, however much grease it's been sitting on for days, this is going to be fantastic. All right, let's move on to the Chefman. So this one's as basic as it gets. Come on in here and have a look. I've got a bunch of dials that tells me what's going on, so I got it set to bake. 375 degrees and I've got it up to 60 minutes and I have preheated this oven now it's pretty simple it's got a, a simple rack there's no buttons or math you have to do or timing just open up that oven door and slide it okay it seems that this wants to bend a little bit and not let me get my chicken in so give me one second fixed it <laughs> problem solver. We're going to go ahead and use the basket that it comes with. Now that's more for air frying, I think, but it's going to do the trick here. So let's let that go to work. Careful with that rack. So this one's going to be fun. We got our new wave going, we got our chefman going, and now we're going to use the probe in our ninja. So here we go. I'm going to grab the basket that has the little probe marker there. Let's plug you right in there like that. And then we'll go ahead and get this into the deepest part of the breast. All right, here we go. Uh, hmm. That is tight. That is tight. That is tight. All right. Uh, uh, hold on. And by the way, I can hear you now. It's not fair. It's a smaller basket. It's not for chicken. It's an air fryer. Well, hold on a sec. Normally I would agree with you, but right on the box, they decided to put a chicken. So challenge lead, challenge accepted. However, it may be a bit too big. Hold on. Let's see, let's see. Oh, there it is. A three pound chicken. Where the hell do you get a three pound chicken? Do they make three pound chickens? How about a three pound Cornish hen? <laughs> That'll work. All right, fella, you just received your pardon, and you are going to take his place. There we go. There, three pound chicken. Or as I like to call it, a light snack. Yep. We are using the probe, so let's go ahead and press this guy to manual and set this to 165, which means when that temperature hits 165 degrees, this is going to tell us that's pretty cool. Starting at 48. We got a while to go, but he's little. All right, let's check in to see how the chicken's doing. First up, the rotisserie chicken with about nine, 10 minutes left, and it is gorgeous. Look at that. Holy cow, talk about restaurant quality. Now let's have a look at the Chefman. Again, the easiest one to use, big old dials. I, it, it might not be as pretty as the rotisserie, but I'll tell you, roasted chicken with that salt, pepper, garlic is gorgeous. Another 10 or 11 minutes left on that. And finally, let's check out our Ninja. And it's almost there, 159 degrees against 165. That means in just a minute, we'll be able to pull that giant three pound chicken slash Cornish hen out and have a pee. These are gonna be so tasty. And here we go, look at this. 
The probe temperature is telling me I've hit my target temperature of 165 degrees, which is where you want to be for poultry. Now, a lot of people will pull it out at 160 and let those last five happen over the rest, but we wanted to see how close it got there and how much time it took to reach that target temperature. So here we go. Come on in here, let's have a look. Oh, <laughs> it did a nice job. Let's go ahead and get that out of there. We'll set it down just like that. And let's cut in. Nice crisp skin, super juicy. Oh my goodness, that is wonderful. Holy cow. Talk about just dripping. Nice. All right, a little bit of a taste test here. Mmm, heavy. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Oh, and that skin. Oh, 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 I do love me some chicken bacon. And now, come on over here quick. We got 30 seconds left on our rotisserie chicken. Have a peek at this. Is that not one of the most gorgeous things ever? I mean, this is like, holy cow. No one will be seated in the last 12 seconds of the rotating chicken. Holy cow. Oh my, look at this bubble. Here, can we see that? Look at this. Oh, that's some, all right, here we go. Hey, turns out these aren't heat gloves. <laughs> Beautiful skin. Absolutely gorgeous. You could feel it pop. And look at this. How juicy and tender is that chicken? Are you kidding me with this? That's beautiful. <laughs> that is tender, juicy, steamy. Perfect rotisserie chicken. Mmm. It just melts in your mouth. Oh my god. And now the chefman's ready. Alright, let's have a peek here. Oh, that looks great. Maybe not the wow factor that we're used to in the other two, but I don't know. It's still a chicken that I'm looking forward to digging into. Here we go. Nice crispy skin. You hear that sizzle and pop. Beautiful. Here we go. Oh, the skin is great. I felt it snap. Lovely. Just beautiful. And again, steamy, beautiful, dripping. I gotta say, mmm, these chickens were fabulous. I'll tell you what, the Chefman tastes great. Visually, not quite as appealing as the other two. The new wave with its rotisserie function, out of this world. The look and the browning on these, the skin is outstanding. And our Ninja, with the ease of use, putting that probe in there, you just gotta watch for the size of it. So, all in all, based on size, timing, appearance, taste, ease, I gotta give this one to the new wave and its rotisserie feature. This was outstanding. And, just in time for lunch. So now what we want to do is go ahead and have a look at the unique features that each one of these units brings to the table so we can see if that helps you out with what you're doing. So here we go. Uh, what this has that no one else has is the ability to toast. So I'm going to set that to toast and we're going to, we're going to make some toast. Psst. Turns out that 95% of people in America have a toaster. You're right. Let's move on. Now the Ninja does have a couple of technologies that are very unique. They've got the Smart Finish and Match Cook technology. So we're going to go with the Smart Finish. So I've got a nice, big, fantastic 16 ounce New York strip here. I'm going to pop the probe in, just like that. And we're going to put that in the first basket. Fits real nice. Plug in our probe. I'm going to select Air Fry. And then because I'm using the probe, I'm going to go ahead and set my target temperature. I'm going, to, I'm going to set that to 130 degrees, nice, medium, rare, perfect. So let's go ahead and start that. And then on basket two, I want to give that broccoli air fried for about, I would say, six minutes is going to do it. Let's hit number two and start. And then I'm going to hit smart finish. So our new wave also has a very cool feature, and that's its searing plate. 
That means that you can get outdoor quality grill marks and grilling inside and still get those great bar marks on your steaks and burgers and stuff. Here's what I mean. I've been preheating our sear plate for five minutes. That's all it's gonna ask you to do. So once that's ready, I'm gonna go ahead and take our sear plate out. And I want you to listen to this real close. You ready? You hear that sear? Isn't that beautiful? Oh, music to my ears. So we've also got a probe with the new wave. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that right in place and slide this right back in. And searing happens at about 425 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna keep that temperature the same and I'm gonna plug in my probe. You can have a look here. Nice and even, that's exactly where it goes. We're gonna close that up. I'm gonna press and hold the probe button, which brings up the temperature. I'm gonna set that to 130 degrees, just like our Ninja, and hit start. It really is that simple. But what I am gonna to have to do on this is when this hits about 100, 110 degrees, I'm gonna put our broccoli in on the bottom rack to heat up at the same time. Okay guys, here we go. We are at 109, almost 110 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add my broccoli. When I open this, it just pauses. I'm gonna go ahead and put the broccoli on the side that the steak isn't cooking on. There we go. And slide it right back in just like that. And listen, while we're here, I have myself an observation. We're at almost 110 degrees on this steak, and they are the exact same size steaks that we use in both machines. Have a look at our Ninja here. While this one is now at 111 degrees, this one is at 80. So we do have a pretty big difference in how fast these steaks are hitting temperature. So my guess is that this one's gonna be done first, so let's give it a couple more minutes and then we're ready to cut into it. And just like that, holy cow, that was lightning fast. In between, I was even saying, can you believe how fast that is? That's the reason that we use that bottom searing plate. That's what that's so great for. So let's go ahead and take <laughs> Look at that, won't you? And then, if you love those bar marks, there they are. <laughs> How beautiful is that? And that grill plate, by the way, is nonstick, so it is super easy to clean. There we go. The broccoli is bright and green and fresh and cooked. That is gorgeous, what a nice plate. And really, absolutely minimal work. So this is gonna work this way on your chicken, your chops, your steaks, any of your big proteins. So let's go ahead and cut into this and see how we're looking. Oh, look at that. That is absolutely perfect. Juicy, medium rare. Oh, let's see how it tastes. Do you really need to fire up your barbecue? Oh. So there we go. The temperature is at 130 degrees and the second basket caught up part way through to hopefully be ready at the same time. So let's check our broccoli first. Oh, fork went through it nice. It's got a nice steam on it. Perfect. Let's set that over there. That's a great little side dish. You can do that with your Brussels sprouts, asparagus, any of that kind of stuff. Let's slide that back in. And now, oh, aren't you pretty? There we go. <laughs> Air fryers. There we go. Air fryers, boy, have come a long way. Let's go ahead, poke that in there. Oh, I can't wait to dig into this. Here we go. Oh, my. Oh, would you look at that. <laughs> that is a pretty steak. That's lovely. Doesn't have my bar marks, but it looks pretty good. Let's go ahead. So as promised, the steak is done to perfection. The side dish is perfect. Now let's see how it tastes. All right, so for our air frying only test, of course, we're gonna go with French fries, crinkle cut, cause they're the best. And almost all air fryers base what they're doing on two pounds of fries. So we're gonna make this experiment as even as we can. I've even got a scale out and we're gonna measure two pounds of French fries. So there's our two pounds. I've had our machine preheating. I always like to preheat. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna utilize the fact that we have two baskets and instead of trying to force two pounds into one, let's put one pound in each because let's be honest, no matter how big your air fryer is, once you cover that bottom, 
Now you've gone to the point where you've got to keep going back to it, shaking it, babysitting it, because anything underneath isn't going to get cooked. That's just the way it goes because there's no heating element on the bottom. So I have one pound in each, and I'm going to go ahead and allow myself for one shake about halfway through. So let's go ahead and pop those back in. I'm going to pick basket one. Air fry. We'll go... Yeah, 390 was good. We're going to go 15 minutes. Shouldn't take much more than that for fries. Let's hit start. And then we're going to do the exact same thing over here. Air fry. 15 minutes. 390. Hit start. So both of these are cooking now. And in about seven minutes, I'll give it a shake. So come on back here and let's talk about our new wave. Get our scale. Let's measure out another two pounds of french fries. Slide those in and set that for 15 minutes. There we go. And now on to our chefman. So listen, I'm going to cut in and point out that I keep blowing breakers on this unit. I switch plugs two or three times, and every time I go to use the second basket, I go ahead and I blow that fuse. Now I've tried three different outlets and had the same problem each time. So to keep this contest going, I'm going to have to go ahead and bring this down to one basket and give it the shake. So let's reload and get this going again. All right, so we got our two pounds of fries. And so we don't keep blowing the breakers around here, we're going to go ahead and put those all in one basket. And that is going to be one of the problems that we're going to have. So we're going to go ahead and make sure we shake this up a lot. Let's slide that in. 390, 20 minutes. She's already going. Let's come on back here. And finally, two pounds for our Chefman. The Chefman comes with a basket, nice and deep, I like that. One thing I did notice though, that I do want to point out, have a look at this. So I'm going to slide this rack in, just like that. And when I slide the top rack in, watch what happens. Don't you think there's room for a little bit more there? I think the basket almost could have been a little bit bigger, but that's okay. So let's pop it up there and set that for the same. 15 minutes. All right, so guys, we are ready now. Uh, in all fairness, I added five minutes to each one of these machines because they're pretty thick fries and I want them done and crispy. And now we had our problem or two with the Ninja and I'm just gonna throw it out there. This is a power sucking behemoth. There's no doubt. Remember, you're pretty much running two air fryers there. So if, 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 if you've got any questions about the wiring in your house or it's a little bit older, you may be relegated to one basket or two basket for low power cooking. The only reason I'm saying that is because it kept blowing the breakers here. It's not like we live in a 1904 colonial or anything. So what we did was we took the whole two pounds and put them in one basket and added a couple of shakes. So the good news is if your power can handle it, you're going to get four pounds of fries in those two baskets. And that is pretty cool. So we got about 30 seconds left. All right. Let's have a look. Perfect. So guys, here we go. No extra fat, calories, cholesterol, and of course, because it's a basket that I've had to load up pretty good, you get a little bit of uneven cooking. And the more you shake it, the more even it comes out. But I mean, these are these are nice. We've got a nice little snap to it. Steamy. Let's go ahead and get a bit of salt on these guys. And of course, I have my have ketchup will travel bowl. Let's go ahead and pick out a good one here. Well, bugger, that's hot. <laughs> really good, though. <laughs> All right, Ninja, you did a good job. If both of these baskets fired up with no problem, we'd be a little bit more even. We had to get all two pounds in one. If I shook it a little bit more, they'd be a bit even. This is fine. Did a nice air fryer job. All right, come on back. Now, we've got our new wave. Now, I do wish that there was a bit deeper of a basket on here because it does make it a little bit challenging sometimes to give it a shake when I'm running with the full two pounds. But look at this. Those are nice and even. All the fries look terrific. Let's go ahead and give it our little snap test. Oh yeah, nice and billowy, nice and steamy. Love that. Let's hit it with some salt. And dip it in our ketchup. Mmm. Also, <laughs> there goes the skin on the roof of my nose. Worth it though. The french fries are so good. And last but not least, our Chefman. Now, they do give us a nice deep basket. I do like that. Like I said, 
I think the basket could have been a little bit bigger. I don't know. That's a, that's a lot of wasted space to me. Let's go ahead and bring that out. Nice and even. I love that. test. Mm-hmm. Nice and crispy. Oh, that's good. Mmm. So any one of these machines is going to be terrific for all of your fried foods and your convenience foods. What I like about this is the nice deep basket so you can get a lot of food in there at one time which is terrific. Over here with our new wave, really really simple. Took the whole two pounds, only needed one shake and there is another rack if you wanted to add more food underneath. Just remember, it's always a good thing to give it an extra shake or to switch the levels just to keep everything even. And finally, our Ninja. The fries that were done were great, the ones that were a little bit closer to the top. We had our power issues, and I gotta be honest, if we have them, other people are gonna have them. So it's something to keep in mind, even though all three of these machines are 1800 watts, that's the only one that drew so much that it popped those breakers. So, guys, that was a lot of tests, a lot of fun, a lot of food. Let's see what the final results are. Three worthy contenders, and there can be only one winner. So let's start with our chef man. I'm a tiny bit disappointed in this. It's a little bit on the cheap feeling side. It really didn't cook that evenly, and that chicken needed a little more time over and above these at the same temperature to finish cooking. So uh, first one that's gotta go is the chef man. Sorry, buddy. Now, of the two that we have left, I gotta say the Ninja was pretty darn good. These guys are famous for having great appliances that work terrific, that last a long time. I do have to say though that the two basket system, I don't know, it's kind of kitschy. I'm not sure how practical it is. It's twice the amount to clean. That being said, the steak that came out of here was terrific. I do like that match cook system. If I am going to use both baskets, it's really cool. Love the probe. Love all the digital doodads. Really, really do like that. The power thing, the power thing got me a little bit because all three of these machines are 1800 watts. We did the same food, same, same, same everything. This was the only one that gave me problems. So I got to kind of keep that in the back of my head. But when it comes to results, when it comes to the fast cooking, when it comes to the even cooking, and when it comes to the sheer amount of food and options and just the incredible amount of dishes that I can make for myself, my friends, my family, all at the same time, that sear plate, I gotta say that it's almost a, it's almost a pretty easy victory today. The New Wave Brio 15.5 quart air fryer oven really knocked it out of the park. And more options for more meals and more culinary experiences than virtually any appliance you'll put on your counter. So guys, that's it. My name's Mark Gill. This has been Marks on the Grill. We'll see you next time.